So the traditional thing with Android versions these days is that you only get a few cosmetic changes up at the top and most of the interesting stuff is happening under the hood. And here's what's changed with the new Android O. So the first change you might notice is the new notification dots. This is Google adopting something that Apple already does with the iPhone a lot. Um, when you have a notification or any alert that an app wants to send you, you have a dot. One of the neat things is that the color automatically matches the icon itself. So here with this Twitter thing, and you can just swipe it away. So you don't have to go to the notification tray anymore. You can just swipe it away from there. Jumping into the email app here, this is neat. Google showed us uh, a demo where when you have something like an address, machine learning integrated into Google's apps is going to pick that up and immediately help you select the full address rather than just a piece of text. It's not happening <laughs> in this demo uh, or in this device itself, but when Google showed it on stage, it's really neat. So you just double tap and it automatically knows the entire address and selects it for you and you can just copy and paste it elsewhere. So this is probably one of the most requested features that Google just added Android O and it's picture in picture. So when you're watching a YouTube video, if you just go to home, the video carries on playing and you can continue using the phone as normal. And then you can just reposition it wherever you like and just carry on watching as you're going. Now, the issue with this is that it's only supported on YouTube Red. So if you don't have a YouTube Red subscription, it doesn't work for you. Uh, so you only have it with YouTube Red and Google Geo, which is their video chat client. Other third party support is expected to come in the future, but Google doesn't have anything to say at the moment. Another neat thing that Google has done is autofill. So if you have your login details on twitter.com with a Chrome browser, it remembers them for apps that you have on Android. So as in this case, it picks up the information from Chrome and it logs you into Twitter into the Twitter app via your login and your password from Chrome, the web browser. Besides that, the notification tray has only really changed cosmetically. The little edit icon and the settings icon have been moved down to the bottom rather than up at the top. Uh, but it's still, it's mostly the same thing. The settings menu is actually the thing that has changed quite a bit. Uh, a few things have been reorganized, but also when you go into a particular sub-menu, most things have been relegated to this advanced section. So you only really get the primary settings and then you jump to the advanced section to get the full set. Uh, Google is also kicking in some suggestions for when you're setting up the phone. I'm guessing the number of suggestions will be reduced once you start doing things. Uh, but broadly speaking, it's still Android the way it's always been. So the things you probably won't see when you first boot up Android O, but you will definitely appreciate are uh, something that Google names vitals. And these are stability, security, battery life, and just general speed of the interface. The first thing is, actually, you will notice this, it's a boot up time. With Android O, the Google Pixel boots up twice as fast and it is super impressive. You immediately get a sense of the improvement of speed there. Uh, in terms of stability, can't say anything about it now. It's still better software, so that will be later this year when Android O comes out just as everything else here at Google I.O. is later this year. And as for security, Google is introducing a thing called Google Play Protect, which isn't really a new thing. Google has been scanning for malicious apps on your Android phone for a long time, uh, but Google Play Protect is essentially branding it and just making it more visible to people and just essentially reminding them to make use of that feature and just to know that it's there. As to better life, Google is doing a couple of things to control background resource usage by apps. So first of all is location. When an app is in the background and asks for location, Android O won't activate the GPS and the actual device sensors. It will just give it the last known location that the phone had. And when the app is in the foreground, that's when it will use the location hardware on the phone. So that will save on battery life. Google is calling these things wise limits. And it's doing the same with other resources that an app might use in the background, just making sure that the battery life is as long as possible. Overall, it's just the same old Android, but a whole bunch of under-the-hood optimizations, which is all you can really ask for. So the traditional thing, yeah. The traditional thing with Android these days is that there's only... The common thing with every Android version each year is that there's only a few cosmetic... Uh, I can't even, why can't I speak?